Hey YouTubers, welcome back. Welcome to video number 17 of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, October 8th, 2010. So, thanks again for tuning in to my channel. Today I got some questions that some YouTubers have sent me over the last week or two. I'll be looking at those. First of all, I'm going to show you some old lawnmowers that were dropped off here yesterday. So, some guy dropped off this old Honda, that Craftsman here. This one I think I'm going to repair. So, he basically gave them to me. This one here is really old, it's self-propelled, and the motor's shot. There's no compression whatsoever on this one, even after adjusting the valves and all that. And it's got big holes in the body, but I've got a customer that needs parts off of this one. I also got this old lawn boy here. It's got a metal fuel tank on there. And I got this old Briggs over here with the green body. So those are pretty well for parts. The body on this one is pretty soft. When you put your foot on it to start it, you can feel the blade underneath. Anyways, it doesn't take long to have a lot of spare parts. So the first question today, a YouTuber writes me saying that he needs to replace a carburetor on his 1973 Case Tractor Model 224. But he's asking me if the aftermarket carburetors made by stands and other companies are as good as the original carburetor. I don't know if they're as good, but for the price, they're good. Because to buy an original case carburetor, you're probably looking at two to three hundred, maybe more. At least here in Canada, that's what it would cost. So if you only pay a hundred bucks for an aftermarket carburetor and it works good, then I think it's a good deal. And I would definitely go that route because when something's getting old, as what the YouTuber mentions, like a 1973 tractor, it's probably easier getting an aftermarket carburetor than a brand new OEM carb. Definitely I would try it. Second question I have is what spark plug goes into the steel grass trimmers? Well, pretty well all of their trimmers take an NGK BPMR 7A spark plug. You can cross-reference this to a champion plug, which will end up being CJ7Y or RCJ7Y. Now a YouTuber has a 12 horsepower Crestman long tractor. He's even put a new battery in it, but when he goes to start it, it's intermittent. Sometimes it will start, sometimes it will not. And sometimes he says he hears a clicking noise and sometimes he doesn't. Well, what usually causes this is the solenoid. So here's a universal solenoid, meaning that it will work pretty well on any machine. So this is what we're talking about. This little unit here, after it gets old and worn out, it's going to be intermittent when you go to start it. What this does is there's a little wire that goes here, a positive wire with a bit of power to it when you turn the key, and it activates a little cylinder inside or some kind of mechanism that basically feeds power to both battery cables which are hooked up to these nuts here. So if your tractor will start sometimes, sometimes it won't, and you do not hear a click, even if your battery's good, try replacing the solenoid because you can usually get them for $20 or less. It's a quick and easy fix, usually will fix the problem, and it's much easier than taking it to a shop. Where you will usually find the solenoid is under here, on this specific tractor here. This is a Craftsman twin cylinder. And the solenoid on this one is actually right in here. So to remove the solenoid on this one, I'd have to take off this bolt here, and then it should come out. Sometimes there's two bolts and a nut on the other side holding the solenoid. On some tractors, the solenoid will be under a compartment over here, and some tractors have the gear shifter right here. You take off a plate, and the solenoid's right under there. If you're not sure where to find the solenoid on your tractor, look at your parts list that came with your tractor, or go online with the model number and serial number of your tractor and look up a parts diagram. If you're not sure, you can go to a small engine shop and they have diagrams there and they can show you exactly where it's located. Also take the solenoid off with you so that when you go to buy a new one, you can match it right up. What I just got is a YouTuber has a Yamaha Big Bear ATV and this question here will apply to all ATVs out there, including lawn tractors as well. He says when he goes to start it, he can hear a buzzing noise. He's even charged the battery and he's tried starting it and all he hears is a little buzzing noise but the engine won't turn over. Actually what that means is that the battery's dead, like completely dead finished. The battery does that, what happens is even if you charge it, it won't take the charge or if it does it's going to be very short-lived. 
it's not going to produce enough amperage to turn over the engine. Therefore, all you're going to hear is the solenoid making this buzzing noise. And it's the same principle on the lawn tractor because I've experienced the exact same problem. Here's where the battery is. I had to replace the battery in this tractor this fall and it had the same symptoms. You're very fortunate if you get five years out of these batteries from my experience. I've never had one last any longer than that. So when you get those symptoms, you can always bring your battery to an automotive shop to get it tested if you think the battery is still good and they're going to be able to tell you if the amps and the battery are still putting out what they should. Now some of you have watched the videos I recently posted on how to replace the points and condenser on the Honda Z50 and CT70. Well somebody's asking me if it's the same principle on the newer Honda CRF50. Well the answer to that is no because the newer bikes do not have points and a condenser so you don't have to worry about that. It's much easier just having electronic ignition like on the new bikes. The last question for today is a YouTuber has a snowblower and it will only run with the choke on. Well, usually that's indicative of a dirty carburetor. So take your carburetor apart, clean it, put a new carb kit in it, and go from there. Most of the time, that will cure your problem. And if you look through my videos, go on my channel, there are videos there showing how to clean a carburetor on your snowblower with a Tecumseh engine. Also, you can type in how to clean the fixed jet on your snowblower engine, and you'll see a short video there on how to do that. So thanks for watching again. I want to thank everybody who've sent monetary contributions for my channel. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next week. Take care now.